one. Hello, welcome back everybody. Uh, happy Tuesday to everyone. Uh, we have our special guest, uh, in addition to Mayor Brian Taylor and myself, Rolly Russell here, we have uh, Superintendent of Schools for School District 51, uh, Ken Minette. So welcome, Ken. And uh, thank you. We, uh, we, uh, we, we have a couple little questions for you, but first, you know, we've, we heard some announcements in the recent days around uh, opening to a potential vision to the future for schools. And uh, we're not gonna ask you to look into your crystal ball about when they might open, uh, but perhaps you can take this opportunity to at least update people, update the community on some of the things that you feel like are, are worth highlighting on behalf of the school district. Okay, well, thank you for the invite. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, education has really changed, as we know, in the last four weeks. We are now entering our fourth week of remote education. And uh, I think what's important for people to know is we're trying to expand uh, our continuity of learning model as we progress from one week to the next. Uh, presently, we um, have contacted all students in all their homes and created the conditions so that we can do online learning. Um, that includes making sure that all of our staff are very familiar with the different platforms we're using. We're using three main platforms, Zoom, like we're using today, uh, Microsoft Teams, and another one called Google Classroom. Um, of course, moving to this model meant that we had to ensure that children had technology too, and so, our principals did a great job at the very beginning, as well as our teachers, about contacting homes and finding out what their needs were in terms of technology, uh, as well as their other needs. So there might have been some needs regarding uh, food security and whatnot and social emotional supports. Um, and so we've tried to move forward with that knowledge to enable all the learners to have access to technology. That said, there has been a few spots where we just could not get uh, Wi-Fi to students. Uh, and so learning has looked a bit different, a bit more traditional uh, kind of package type of learning. Our first week was really dedicated to connecting with families and making sure that they were doing all right. Our second week has been dedicated to familiarizing students with this new technology and platform of learning. And our third week has been dedicated, which was last week, to, to uh, getting up tier one um, emergency child care workers uh, student supports. And we've accomplished that as of last week. So we have two places that we have school care or child care. One is at Curly, and one is at Midway Learning Center. Um, this week we are working on our tier two uh, child care or school care. And tier two is really about all the service providers. So that's a, a very large group. And we surveyed all our um, parents last week and we've got some information. And this week what we are doing is working with our principal group to establish tier two um, daycare. And the tier two daycare will actually uh, happen at the school sites where the students attend, a little bit different than our tier one daycare, because we recognize uh, that it's a slightly bigger group and they'll be a bit more familiar with those, those learning sites. Um, moving forward next is we'll be working with our principal group and our learning services uh, support principal, specifically around vulnerable students. Uh, our intention is to um, support those students, if we can, more in a one-to-one -one sort of space, so bringing them into our school sites and uh, providing one-to-one -one or small group supports, because uh, we know that there are students that will have some challenges learning in this new format. Um, can, uh, can you tell us about school grounds and how things are going in terms of, of the use of playgrounds and green spaces? Is, is that yeah. all right in terms of distancing? So the messaging was pretty strong from the um, Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education that so social distancing protocols had to be in place. And um, at the beginning, uh, and especially during spring break, what we noticed were large groups of kids coming onto uh, our school basketball courts and our playgrounds. Um, and what we knew was that's just not conducive to the reality of, of social distancing. But the Ministry of Children or Ministry of uh, Health has made it really clear is that family groupings could be in those spaces because they're going back to the same household. 
But if you had multiple groupings of kids going back to different households, that was likely to compromise the whole social spacing um, effect. And so uh, we did get contact from your city and they were um, cordoning off school grounds or playgrounds and uh, other sites. And, and so we followed suit in that. Uh, it was not a mandate from the ministry. Um, you know, if, if parents still need to get out there with their families, um, I think they are the exception to the issue. But as soon as you get more than one household grouping in those spaces, you definitely have to worry about social spacing. And uh, playgrounds are not conducive to doing that. It just brings everybody together. The other thing we couldn't manage, and I'm sure it's true of the city, is we couldn't manage cleaning uh, those devices on a regular basis. And we're very familiar with that the virus survives anywhere between three to seven days. So that was of huge concern to us too. And, and there was so there's uh, food security has obviously been top of mind for a lot of people. And, and I think we, we've heard uh, and understand the role that the schools play in helping access food for some uh, children, particularly anything to add on, on that piece. Um, really proud of our, our team. Um, again, when we started reconnecting with students, that was one of our questions was just to determine how families were doing. We do know that families are in some cases unemployed right now and just do not have those kind of resources. Uh, so our teachers and principals uh, received some information in collaboration with uh, FIS. Um, we have a, determined who requires extra support around food security. And uh, Carol Mitchell, who also works for the school district, has organized with different uh, food organizations, uh, specifically packages that have gone out. And today is one of the days when all those food packages are going out to different families. Uh, last week, Midway had received a considerable amount of uh, milk donations and their principals actually went out and started delivering the milk to different families they felt might, uh, know uh, require that kind of, of service so we're, we're proud of that and we hope that it it will continue now that it's been established and it could increase with time Ken I have a uh, 13 year old grandson at home and we really appreciate the outreach from the school in terms of virtual learning he really misses the social part of it though it's becoming yeah. tougher and tougher on families and in terms of keeping children occupied and happy in this new environment. So thank you very much for all the school is doing. Yeah, we know it's not the same. And, uh, you know, lots of kudos to our educators who, um, if you can imagine it's spring break, we're quite panicky about this new way of, of teaching because despite having, a, you know, technology in schools, this kind of teaching platform is probably new to 90%, if not more teachers. And uh, they've embraced it. Uh, very proud of how they've embraced it. And, and the interesting piece is as it goes along, the sophistication and their learning uh, feels pretty exponential. And then on the flip side of that, we've got all these children that are accepting education in a different way. And you can imagine in a Zoom meeting with, uh, you know, 10, 15 children, it can be pretty challenging. So that whole norming and forming piece that we have in September when we have new groups of students and new teachers takes about a month to manage to get teacher management and expectations in effect. We've basically just getting to our first month at the end of this week in a completely new platform of learning and exceptional uptake. I, I got to say that uh, we are very pleased with how parents have supported us and how students are uh, doing their very best and, and how teachers have gone from a place where they're going, oh, I've got three months of learning still to go. And, and they've really had to prioritize what's important in student learning to prepare them for next year. Absolutely. I, you know, I would, I would echo that, that gratitude. It, it really is extraordinary, extraordinary times right now. And, and uh, there's been some spectacular uh, demonstrations there in the education system. Uh, and, you know, our, our teachers, a huge shout out of respect to our teachers for navigating this. And I, I've been privy to some of those, uh, those Microsoft Teams conversations with 15 <laughs> students all on them at once. And it's, it's pretty impressive how well they're coming together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, conscious of time and, and we're trying to keep these relatively short. So, okay. so that's all I had to, to ask. I, I thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Brian and, and Ken for any last words. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Again, uh, I think that, you know, this is part of a, of a whole community effort at this point. And 
So thank you to all the dads and moms out there that are working with children uh, with the help of the school. So thanks for coming on today. Yes, thanks for having me. And again, a shout out to you guys for creating this opportunity and to all our parents out there that are doing marvelous work in a, a really challenging time. Um, we're really proud of everybody that's involved in this new educational format. Uh, thanks. I'm welcome. And uh, anytime, I'm welcome to uh, come in again if you would like that. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you.